There are some things to like in the fifth Die Hard film, A Good Day to Die Hard. There's a really good, really long car chase, and there's a really good explodery, helicopter fly aroundery, big machine gun, oh, 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 action finale. And there's even a handful, a small handful, a handful of a guy who had an accident in shop class, maybe, of really good classic Bruce Willis, John McClane, diehard moments, some one-liner zingers. The problem with the film, the problem with the fifth Die Hard is basically that it's the fifth Die Hard. They're stretching this premise out and for some reason wanting to alter the fundamental way that the Die Hard films work, which sucks. That basic formula is this. John McClane is a blue collar cop who is the only one that knows that something big bad is about to happen and he's the only one that knows that it's robbery rather than terrorism and even though he's smarter than everybody he doesn't have the authority to act on what he knows to be true so he gets his ass whipped repeatedly and then becomes cowboy John and saves the day. But somebody saw the fourth Die Hard at some point and said you know what this series was missing this whole time? His kids. Why? Of course. That's what was wrong with the first three Die Hards. It didn't have his children in it. Somebody's cut open the Die Hard body, reached their hand inside, swooshed around their fist inside the guts, put in this actor named Jai Courtney, who plays John McClane Jr., the heir to Bruce Willis's John McClane bloody tank top throne, and zipped it back up and said, go make $100 million or more. And that's unfair. Bruce Willis is still really great somehow, and all of the effects, most of them anyway, are practical. And because of that, there are some moments that make Die Hard really good and make it seem even like an old-fashioned Die Hard movie. But the problem with it is that most of the rest of the film, the majority of which is really terrible, really hackneyed father-son drama that's just invented kind of out of, out of nowhere, makes the thing sink like a stone. And it's fundamentally not fair to cast an actor, or any actor really, especially one like Jai Courtney, to go be in a movie playing John McClane's son. There's not many young actors who can hold the candle to Bruce Willis. There's even fewer that can hold the candle to Bruce Willis in his element as John McClane. And there's even fewer of those who would even want to be, even if they could hold this candle up, to be in a movie like Die Hard 5 instead of something like, say, Looper. It doesn't work. The father-son character pairing in the film are so mismatched charisma-wise that the father-son storyline, which could have been deal withable in a better film, instead sticks out like a huge, sore, big, gross thumb and takes the movie down with it. So, what should you watch instead this weekend if you don't want to watch Die Hard 5? Watch one of my absolute all-time favorite above-the-line genre pictures, especially one of the ones that's made in the past 20 years. And it was made by Tony Scott in that weird period, right before he started to suffer from, like, full-blown Tony Scott disease. And I'm talking about a movie from 2001 called Spy Game, and that's a film that managed to spend like over a hundred million dollars and the vast majority of that isn't in explosions or car chase it went to pay actors salaries because it's got a pairing even though it's a genre spy film spy shit as john mcclain senior calls his son stuff in Die Hard 5. It has really talented actors. It's got Robert Redford and Brad Pitt, which is a kind of a, they're not father-son exactly, but it's got a, you know, older guy, younger guy dynamic in the film. But they're equally matched, and because they're both really talented actors, the whole thing works in a way that Die Hard 5 never even gets close to. So watch that instead. Spy Game, 2001, Tony Scott. Rest in peace, buddy.